Yeah, redesigning plugin functionality using WordPress blocks. So, as you know, the, the, the editor's coming out that Joe just gave us a lovely introduction to, and I would like to take a little look at how we uh, take an existing plugin that's been around for a while and we need to alter the way it interfaces with the uh, current state of affairs with, with the Gutenberg coming out. So we need to redesign some stuff. So. Um, basically, the challenge that was presented to us uh, by the Gutenberg folks, and this quote here is from the handbook uh, on the page there. So, this editor will endeavor to create new page and post building experience that makes writing rich posts effortless and has blocks to make it easy. What today might take short codes, custom HTML, or mystery meat embed discovery. You gotta love that. Uh, so that, yeah, okay, that's the link to the handbook. Uh, but it, it sounds like they're uh, denigrating things like short codes. Is this really a problem? Do we have an issue with that? I mean, custom HTML, sure. That seems kinda un-WordPress-y. But mystery meat embed, like, I don't even know what that means, but. Um, so the question is, are they trying to say that these things are equal and that they're bad things? So we have something that's very familiar to us like this, you know, typical shortcut, uh, short code that we would use in Paid Memberships Pro. Is this now bad? So we have something like this, okay. Got a short code here, that's that, right? And then uh, this thing is naming the short code. Personally, I like it to use hyphens, not underscores, but that's just me. Kevin doesn't like it, I don't know. Um, that's the short code. Uh, when I think of like, when I think of dashes, that's HTML, CSS stuff, front end sort of thing. So the short code and classes, to me, they should, they should be, or CSS classes, they should be hyphens. But here's an underscore for the button level, and then what you have is button text. You know, those are basically parameters, right? And what you're going to get when you put, the, put this into your post editor or page editor, it's going to look something like this. Right? That's pretty simple. Is that so wrong? But I guess what they're saying is wouldn't, uh, oops, sorry. No, I need to be here. No, it's only going here, sorry. Yep. Okay, so this is looking at the th something Jamie was talking about last night, where we can put in uh, this little toggle control into our JSX, and when we go back, take a look at that block, refresh the page, click on the block, now we have a little toggle there to open in the new window. That's pretty nice, pretty nice feature to have. Um, <coughs> okay, oops. So I guess the question is though, how do we do it? Oops, now I'm off. Okay. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not so simple, right? Because we're making a major shift here. Um, and it's funny because uh, Joe, Joe, Joe was talking about uh, George Washington and he said that's a common motif for him. I don't think that's true, uh, but we really should have had him. Good thing he's not here. Usually what he talks about is Star Trek, you know? Star Wars, Star Wars sorry, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's clear. I mean, he does, right? So. 
I mean, last night we stayed at a lovely B&B uh, and they took a shower and made it into this space age technology. Actually, this does look like Star Trek, you know, beam me up, Scotty, right? You know? And it's got, you know, even like it's creature comforts, you get a little steam shower to going on there, and then, do you see that thing? You could put it on the ground and it would spin to, I don't know what you do with your feet on that, but it looks nice, I don't know. Anyway, but what it boils down to is something, uh, a difference between uh, using JavaScript and uh, a lot more JavaScript uh, versus the standard sort of PHP stuff. Okay, so why do we want to make this change? Well, uh, PHP requires talking to the database, which means it's going to be a little bit slower because you have to go back and forth, and each of those database calls are going to be expensive, whereas JavaScript is a browser technology, and this operator just on your computer. Um, and it's not competing for bandwidth and the processing of the server. So what does it mean to be not in the browser? Well, let's take a look at this. Here's a lovely website that we have. Oh, there's some handsome people. Um, so let's take a look at what the, to build this page, let's look at what the, uh, the page source looks like. Okay, you know, you got your standard links and um, style sheets and JavaScript that's in queued right here. That's just a block of CSS. Um, nothing major, right? Um, but then we compare that to what we get in the browser. Okay, so here what we see is we're actually pulling in something with a huge uh, JSON object. And it's basically got all the settings and everything in there. So you're just grabbing that once and then you're just navigating through your, your browser window. And it does have some stuff that you also use on the front end and that's what this huge JavaScript object is. But you do it once, it's just a block of text essentially, and it's you know downloaded quickly, and then you have it in, and it's lightning fast. Okay, so there is a, uh, a little discussion that we need to have about what is JavaScript, um, because there's lots of different types of JavaScript. So you got, you know, your standard jQuery, Angular, Vue, Node, JSX, ES6. Anybody heard of ES6? Yeah. ES Next, which are both, you know, forms of ECMAScript, ES 2016, ES 2015. So really, JavaScript is basically any file that has a code you, that, uh, uses structures with the, f with the file name and the extension JS, right? So anything that ends in a JS, yeah, that's JavaScript. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you can look at the uh, debate between uh, Netscape and Microsoft from years ago, and that's how we get uh, many different definitions. And so you have JavaScript and ec ECMAScript where uh, JavaScript is the code that's used in these JS files, regardless of the flavor, and ECMAScript is the is code that adheres to the certain standards put forth by the whatever ECMAScript body or whatever. Um, so this was a nice little uh, explanation for uh, how to think about JavaScript. So uh, as a linguist, it's appealing to me. Um, when people call JavaScript a dialect of the ECTAScript language, they mean it in the same sense as when talking about English, French, or Chinese dialects. A dialect derives most of its lexicon and syntax from its parent language, but deviates enough to deserve distinction. One of my favorite questions as a linguist is, uh, what's the oldest language? And uh, a lot of people would say Chinese. 
But either way, it's an unanswerable question because languages are always evolving. So what constitutes Chinese today didn't, you know, a thousand years ago. What's even worse, what the hell is Chinese? It's nothing, it's just some language that's spoken over there that we have no idea what it is. But if you live over there, there's a ton of different languages that people, we would all, you know, whether it's Mandarin, Cantonese, Sesh, uh, I don't know, there, there's a bunch. Some of them are dialects, most of them are just completely different languages. Anyway, shift to the JavaScript, some of the reasons Joe was already talking about, it's basically a shift in the marketplace, shift in demands, um, and shift in what's possible, uh, and a shift towards speed. So, what do we, what do we need to do? Uh, let's start off by building a plugin. There you go. Lovely little uh, sublime text. Um, so basically, what we got here uh, are some folders. The, the blocks folder up top contains the blocks that uh, we'll use in this, uh, in this plugin that we'll be adding to the editor. The CSS and JS just has like common files to all of the, the, uh, the blocks that we'll use. And then the node modules uh, are something that you would download for your development purposes, but when you actually ship the plugin, they're not gonna be there. And there's a ton in there, it's huge. Um, so looking closely at the files that we see in there, this Babel or Babel, uh, this basically is the, the thing that will take the JavaScript that you have and if you need to have it configured in some backwards compatible way, it will be able to render things so they talk to all the different types of JavaScript. Um, and basically what WordPress did was they took React and they created basically their own sort of React modules in the WordPress core, and that's what you're tying into right there. Um, <clears throat> a key concept in React is that you, it's a huge thing maintained by the folks, or started by the folks in, at, at Facebook, and maintained by a group of, you know, uh, high-class developers from Facebook, Twitter, other places, right? And so <clears throat> they have all these modules and you basically just take what you need for the blocks that you're building and you uh, basically are deconstructing. Um, so w in, th in this case, um, you have all of these dependencies that you get from NPM and this is telling uh, NPM what, what dependencies you need to build what you want. I don't know anything about this stuff. I basically just copied from um, Zach's course and it looked good to me, but actually there was once or twice where I, I wanted to add something to it and you just go to the command line and you npm install, it'll add it to this file. Um, so looking closely at this up to the, the top, they have these declarations. Well, I'm building a plugin called uh, WCLVPA blocks, I gave it a version number, license all that sort of stuff. This would also be where I specify a repo, a GitHub repository or something like that. Um, it's interesting when I spin up uh, with NPM, it will say, you know, no repo, but that's okay. Uh, this Babel stuff, it, this is uh, some of the NPM modules that are uh, telling it what to, uh, pay attention to or what to pull in for uh, tying into the, the WordPress functions that we talked about earlier. Um, and then after you run the NPM install, you get this package lock JSON. And what this does is basically if you had something that was uh, out of date, like one of your um, NPM modules, it would tell you, you know, there's a newer version here. And so then you would run NPM audit fix. And what that would get you the latest one and then update your package.json file. So this tells you what, what you're running um, in, in the latest version, right? Um, so it's all, it's all pretty useful stuff. And the reason why I actually wanted to show you this is because it seems kind of daunting, scary, or whatever, but 
you don't need to know anything about it. Just know that these files are there, and those are files that you're going to be referencing, but you really don't you know, need to know exactly what version your JS escape dependencies are. You know, who cares? Um, okay, so here's here's our standard plugin. Um, <coughs> the, the the base file, the W clvpa blocks.php um, and it looks like any other plugin right this is uh, you got your doc block up here which is just declaring everything for you um, and I'm, I'm using a php namespace uh, just to keep it clean I like to use that to keep things out uh, nothing you really need to worry about here uh, really actually Uh, I thought I had another one. Okay, the only thing that matters here is that uh, this one here, require the blocks PHP. The other stuff is uh, extra. Um, okay, uh, we also have this uh, uh, JS file that we're uh, using with this webpack and this is another one it's just you don't really care what it has in there um, what this is important for is this will help uh, reload the browser so when you're developing you make your changes it'll be able to show you what you what you're changing uh, okay yes so this is what we worry about uh, that that will kick everything off um, so that file looks like this, um, and again, we only care about this right here. Uh, actually, sorry, we do care about the other stuff. Th this is going to be loading your, your block scripts. Uh, sorry. Um, this is just a standard, it's not a standard, what I should say is, th it's, it's very much like in queuing CSS or JavaScript uh, using WP and Q, but it's got a new function which is uh, the block and queue scripts, okay? So that's a different new function that's come out, pretty much looks the same, um, but you have uh, this array is uh, handled a little bit differently, I mean, I mean Analogically, it's the same. Uh, and then the file time, which is a nice feature. So I, I actually don't know if you put a, uh, a version out here or not. Maybe not. Uh, there we go. No? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what we want. It, uh, oh, you can call time as the version number? Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah, so, yeah I, and I don't, I don't know if, uh, exactly. Yeah, I think, it, I think that w works in concert with the webpack uh, to trigger the update. I, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it'll cache it. So, like, WordPress loads the script that's the Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it would work with like a WP and Q script though. I don't know if it's just a block and Q. But anyway, um, this is what uh, the block and Q looks like. So it's, a, it's pretty much the same type of thing um, in Q script and the Q style. Um, the, the, we have both the uh, front end and back end stuff that's getting in queued there. Uh, okay, so now in the blocks, we looked at that with the blocks uh, PHP, now the blocks JS, we have two imports, uh, one for the checkout button and one for the block button. Um, this one is actually one that we're using for PH, uh, PM Pro, and uh, we thought mnemonically block JS seemed a little more appropriate. This is uh, something that I borrowed from the Atomic Blocks, which is a great set of Gutenberg blocks to play with, and they have some really lovely code in there. They went with index.jx. Completely arbitrary, doesn't matter. Oops. Uh, and then you got your last file is the i18n. This is for 
the whole plugin basically. Uh, so you, you're basically just setting. Does anybody know what I18N stands for? It is translation uh, internationalization. Why? Why is it? Why is it I18N? It's Asian. Yeah, that would sound good. That would be good, except that's not it. <laughs> it's because there's 18 letters in the word internationalization. And you have another one uh, for, there's a, yeah, A11Y uh, is uh, for the uh, accessibility, 11 letters in the word accessibility. And then what's, what's the other one, I10? I-10N or something like that? W3C. W3C, that's not a WordPress thing. Uh, uh, L10N, that's what it is, L10N. Yeah, localization, yep, okay. And so basically it's just saying um, anything that you, you find, uh, just th look for the object and if it has uh, this as the text domain, then render that for translation, which could also just mean translation within English, like changing words uh, using localization. Anyway, okay, so this is what the, uh, we're looking at inside the checkout button, which were, you know, PM Pro, but I changed it to WCLVPA for this. Uh, and so here, here we have, uh, you know, your basic React construct where you're importing what you need from the higher stuff, and then you're declaring your constants, which are essentially, um, <coughs> instead of var, they use constant, uh, const, and, um, uh, and a const is supposed to be constant, right? It doesn't change. And then if you want to uh, ch change, uh, have a variable that changes, then you use the word let. Uh, so, kind of avoid var now, but uh, that's all we're doing here. And then uh, you have this export function, which will export the block. There's a lot more below this, so. Um, okay, so this is, this is basically what the export is, and sorry, that's cut off there, but uh, basically that's going to be your title, description, category, icon, and you know, all these different attributes that, uh, or parameters that you can declare in your block. And then you get down here to the edit. Um, <coughs> and this edit area is what you're rendering in your, in the editor itself. Uh, and props uh, is, is, is about state, so when you're changing things from one state to another, basically you declare state, and then you use your props or properties to change that state. So it's a cascading thing where state is up higher and then props are down below. Um, and then uh, at the bottom there, uh, you can't see it, but there is a save, uh, but in this case, uh, there's not very much that we're um, rendering out, so it, it, it's not, there's not, not much there, but those are the things that you need. Uh, okay, so I, when I was doing my slides, I was like trying to look for something to uh, help explain some of this stuff, and then I found that Zach, I had taken Zach's course, but it was like a long time ago, and he actually built this plugin that actually shows you <laughs> how to build a plugin. So it would have saved me a lot of time. But uh, anyway, th this is the little video that shows you when you inst when you start that block and you install that, it'll sh it'll tell you e each of the things that you need. Yeah, it's it, it is really cool. Um, point point here is that the only the top two are required. And the bottom two, the stuff in the middle, is all optional. Um, okay, so basically, when you install the plugin, install the plugin and activate it, you go to the plus sign to uh, create a block, and and you'll see Zach's things there. This is also his demo demo block, but um, so then yeah, I could go through each of them individually. Uh, 
those are required. Dash icons are optional. Zach makes a big thing about using your own SVG, which is probably a good idea, but you could just as easily use dash icons. Yeah, you did it? Oh, cool. Um, keywords, keywords are optional, but it is pretty useful because, uh, well, actually, you'll see that in a minute. Um, uh, yeah. All right, and obviously this is required because you care mostly about that um, editor area and then save is required too, which will return to your front end. Actually, um, you know, a, a quick note about this, this stuff basically, it kind of looks like um, a cross between HTML and JavaScript. And this is what I, this is J, JSX. Right, and it's basically a, a, a hybrid, if you will, and supposed to be uh, much faster, faster than uh, uh, typical vanilla JavaScript. Okay, so to build a block, do you need to learn React? Eh, probably not. It's good to know a little bit about JavaScript, but uh, other than that, you don't really need to know it. But so let's. Uh, Let's install uh, some NPM, show you what that looks like. Uh, again, this is like nothing that you really need to be overly concerned with, but uh, just for fun, I thought <clears throat> we could look at it together. All I do is I get to the command prompt at the root of my plugin, and I run NPM install. And see, it's, it's grabbing all those packages. It takes, a, it takes uh, maybe a minute or two. Um, and then when you uh, get all that stuff installed, you can now see that you have that package lock, which is now there, and the node module's over there, buddy. Yeah, okay. Right? Uh, so all of those load module, uh, modules are loaded, but just in case you use those in your block, you don't care about them at all. I just wanted to show you that. Yes? No. So, so basically, there is, so NPM is the place where they all are. And what you're doing here is, is grabbing the ones that you need based on what's in your package JSON. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Be from exactly. I, maybe, right? I mean, depends on what your package JSON is. That's all. It's, it is, but you know what? It's so much easier to do it this way because then you don't have to worry about the versioning. It's all taken care of at the NPM level, and uh, they're constantly getting updated, and then your local installation, and you're, you're, you're going to get rid of this stuff anyway. So it's not really, uh, really going to affect anything. Um, oh, nothing, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's, uh, I wanted to show you, this is not the best video, but uh, kind of show you what Webpack is gonna do. Um, so uh, this, is, this is videoing the, uh, the Webpack, and after I run NPM dev to watch the changes that I make, this thing is gonna be running and say, oh, he just edited this block.js, and it'll give me a little note there in my terminal window that uh, something has been updated. Well, okay. What Webpack was actually looking at was this thing here. Uh, and that toggle control that uh, I was playing with earlier, um, I basically just cut it out. And I saved it. And then that's what what Webpack was telling you had been changed. Okay, so putting this all together, what does this mean? Well, we got some buttons there on the uh, front end, but how do we get there?
I didn't realize. That. Yeah. That's this is just the basic uh, uh, native WordPress what button, which I, I really like. I think it's pretty slick. Um, and here I can just give it. No, notice uh, when I did this, it doesn't have the, uh, the open another window. Um, but let's look at the PM Pro checkout button. And this was actually built by David, and I did some CSS to it, uh, which doesn't look great in the back end, but this is cool. This is what React is about. You see that it, it basically I can change the script on the the inspectors or in right in there, and the button's reflecting that. That's what React is about. It's like paying attention to all these areas, and it can react to it wherever the changes are made. Um, now this one is nice. This is the one that I borrowed from the Atomic Blocks and exported for this. Um, so we'll just add this. They basically um, extended the existing button, which is really nice. Um, and I changed a little bit that's going going on in over in the inspector side. But you know, you can change the color, button text. Um, change the size. And in this case, because they had the CSS in there, you can also change the shape. Okay, so looking on the front end. <coughs> isn't that pretty? So lots of ways that you could do this. Um, these are two blocks that we built, or one block that we built and another one that I built custom for this. Um, but I recently saw one where you could uh, build some stuff pretty much using just PHP. However, um, to build, to, to register a block, you still need to do it in, in JavaScript. There's no way to register a block with PHP alone. You need to have that uh, block.js. And basically that is uh, about it. Uh, I was going to put more references, but I wanted to get Joe's plug in. And what I uh, did do is I have a, uh, a repo called WCLVPA um, 2018 blocks, I think. And I'm going to put these slides in that repo, and it'll have the, the, the two blocks that I was uh, showing you here, so you'll be able to actually look at the code and get your hands a little dirty with it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. So I think we got time for questions a little bit. 15 minutes. Come on, bring it. Does all that get compiled to normal HTML? Yes. Like, if I was to compile to normal HTML, would it just be normal HTML? So, I'm going to say yes, but I will backtrack from that a little bit. So that is a great question, and I should have had a slide on that. Um, uh, similar to that NPM module business, that JavaScript is about figuring out all of the HTML and CSS that you need for the front end. And then it, when you hit publish, it'll package that into the HTML and CSS, right? So on the front end, that's all you're gonna, you're, all you're gonna have. Um, so yes, you could grab that HTML, but exporting, I don't know how you would do that. So, uh, I mean, there's no real export feature of the HTML that I'm aware of, but it's there on the front end.
Well, um, I, don't, I don't know that you would be locked in. Um, I think if you, if you export the post, it's going to be like a, the blocks are going to be HTML comments. They won't render yeah. like somewhere else. Yeah. So if you, yeah. Yeah, so exporting the post is not going to do you much good because what it's going to have is Gutenberg specific. Uh, basically, um, that's another slide I should have had, but. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, but. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. So. By the way, I did a quick search. There's like tons of people thinking about how to build modules directly. It takes up so much space. And the um, it's in hot color. It was sun, sun, all the sun, and they showed me the people who are. I was going to do core WordPress development, so all the node stuff that's in core now, like, they're like, just run NPM and install. You know, like, two gigabytes of stuff, and like, I ran a space on my old laptop and it's full up, so you're like, oh. So it's like, I don't know, I mean, if you have to make hard drive and you're on the internet, it's all the time, it's not a problem, but, I mean, but it just kind of really is one of the downside. Yeah, so. Um, So yeah, they do have an export blocks, but here's all you here's all you really get, and and it's got only that. Uh, so remember when Joe said that the, um, the 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 Gutenberg stuff would be commented out or whatever? Uh, that's all you're gonna. That's not gonna be helpful. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, the HTML obviously is there when that page is rendered, but until that page is rendered, you're not going to have it. It's all a secret. But, I mean, there are plenty of people who use the decoupled architecture, so WordPress just on the back end. Um, perhaps you can modify the output uh, to suit your needs, but I, I'm not aware of it. Any other questions? It's really cool stuff. Um, I am a big fan of Gutenberg uh, just because I feel like it will open us up to a whole new range of possibilities for what, you know, what WordPress is capable of. Um, but at the same time, it's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> Uh, the coolest block, you know what? Um, hey, I I haven't uh, I haven't seen anything that I'd be like you know wildly crazy. About. Yeah, um, and I was actually looking for things that were much more simple for demonstration purposes. Um, but I have seen some useful blocks that I, I think is, is, is pretty nice. Like there was one for like uh, um, doing like a, a book review and it, it had a whole bunch of, uh, you know, options that you could specify. And I, I, I thought in terms of uh, usefulness and ease of dealing with that, that's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I think that, uh, you know, we, we have a responsibility to build some really cool ones with PM Pro, so <laughs> that's where we'll focus on. All right. Thanks very much, folks.